So good morning, good morning. This is my morning rants. Now before, uh, I'll tell you how this whole thing started really quick. I wake up in the morning, typically around 2.30, 3 o'clock, because I have insatiable insomnia. And that insomnia makes me, um, it's because I have so many things on my mind. A, you know, I've got my full-time job. I've got my passion and my love, uh, which is Freedom Builders. I have my, my, my tr true passion love, which is my wife and my kids. I have nine of them. I have 14 brothers and sisters, a hell of a lot of nieces and nephews, and a whole lot of things to worry about. And so sometimes that keeps me up at night trying to figure out how to create the best realities for all these things. For every responsibility I have, how do I have the absolute best outcome? In the midst of that, I've also trained myself to watch documentaries and to read reports and studies, to do research and other things so that I am not wasting the wee hours of the morning on ignorance. I do realize that a person can master a second language if they just take two hours a day for about three months, they can get a good base understanding how to speak a second language. Figured that out when I started to try to learn Chinese. So now we have Farouk Hunter's morning rants and video because video works and it's awesome. And you can see me make funny faces early in the morning. And you can realize that at four o'clock in the morning, I really am like all the way up. So if you see me falling down around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, just realize that on a normal day, I was up like this. Now, my morning rant this morning, uh, and we're going to do this. We're going to go back and forth between two things. I'm going to show you my screen. We're going to jump into social media because typically in the morning when I have these morning rants, I've started the practice of sharing them over the last four days with our social media folks. And I'm not doing this live because typically it's like I said, two or three o'clock in the morning. And I don't think anybody should be up responding to me live. If you are, um, I'll pray for you and your insomnia, just like you can pray for mine. Or maybe I'll pray that you keep insomnia and you just get smarter while you do it and do good things, right? So let's switch over to the purpose of our morning rant this morning. Now, our morning rant yesterday morning came because I put a bunch of stuff out there about veganism. It wasn't that I'm attacking veganism or vegetarianism. I'm attacking the system that is promoting veganism and vegetarianism because typically we are made aware of something at the point that someone puts money behind a marketing or advertising campaign to make us aware of something. And instead of us just receiving knowledge that's fed to us ignorantly or consuming it ignorantly, we should consume it with knowledge. And yesterday I questioned what are the sources that are actually pushing this? Who, who in the world is telling us that we shouldn't eat meat and dairy products? And what is their motive and their agenda? I'm not saying that, you know, my viewpoint is that balance is the best. Um, whenever you have balance, you have balance, period. You want to balance your life out? Balance. You know, eat the right amount of right foods in order to have a good life. There's nothing I've found that's, that's ever done that. However, we do have some extremists, you know, and being a Muslim, I'm one of those guys who really doesn't like extremism because it looks really bad when extremism kicks in. Uh, instead, we seek what, you know, Muslims are supposed to do. God said that he created the world in balance. So we look for balance. But today I'm picking on a dear friend. Do not take this personal. Right? Don't take this personal. I love you. Awesome. You my man. Pound. Pound. But yesterday, Awesome challenged me from a very educated standpoint. And I appreciate and love him for it. Um, but he also used some really harsh language. Let's read it real quick. Please check out the site for peer reviewed studies that show the benefit of plant based diet. Please also cite sources when you make dangerous claims. He said, I made a dangerous claim. Study after study has shown that dairy is harmful for humans. Now, the only thing I actually said in this post was, did you know that major research cited by vegans against non-dairy diets was created by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics? This organization supported that a well-planned vegetable diet is sufficient for life, but also stated that every person should have at least a dairy product every day, whether it is cheese or milk. They are the pioneers of the three every day of dairy campaign. They are, they are. And vegans are twisted information and misleading you. Seek balance in your diet and take control. So that reared up this claim of dangerous claims. So this morning in my morning rant, what I'd like to do is give a basis for debate and a basis for understanding information. Now, this is not a biased side. I am not covering a meat topic. 
I'm not covering a vegetarian topic, but I am extending the concept of you should know where your information comes from. We have gotten a habit as a society of just saying, I, there's a study. And because we hear it in the news, we hear all the time, study said, or, you know, there's been a research by such and such. And we never look past that. We never go into detail about that. We wait for someone else to come tell us and rebuke or rebuke that, rebuke that, um, that research. So we're going to do something a little interesting this morning. And we're going to talk about how to identify the sources of our data so that we know that when we quote something, we're quoting from the people we want to quote. Now, I'm going to show you just a little thing. We're going to do an open search this morning, and I'm going to show you. First, let's kind of cover this really quick. This right here is a component of a research study, right? So one of the components of a research study should always include methodology. The methodology, and it should always include the funding sources. There is a reason why in peer-reviewed research studies, published work, what they call published work, meaning published by the overall body of individuals who cover these topics and validate whether or not the work is credible, not whether or not it's right or wrong, but whether or not it's credible based on its methodology, based on its outcomes and based on the science used in order to create the report. So now, and, and, they, and they also look for one thing that the information inside of the study has actually extended the body of knowledge versus just repeating knowledge that's already been created by another professor. So in this there, and this is the Center for Innovation, Research and Teaching, you have here components of research study methodology. I'm not going to read all of that, but I'm just going to read a little segment of it, right? The methodology section should clearly discuss the population sample. The population sample should be richly described and appropriate descriptive statistics and language. That means in every single report, right? You should have this information and let's, Let's run it to the test because see, I, I know, I know that a lot of you who are combating me back and forth, I know that a lot of you who are, are, are saying, you know, well, you know, you're right, you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. Even those of you agreeing with me are not taking time to really read this research. And I don't mean reading a paper or a book because typically a paper or a, uh, when, when I say a paper, I'm talking about a news piece. So an article, let me use the term article using an article is going to cite this information. This is going to say a research done by blah, 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 blah. And then they're going to give tons of their own opinion based off about two or three excerpts from that research. Just like a lot of our vegans and meat eating, so dairy and meat companies are doing the exact same thing. No one is being clearly honest. I'm going to tell you, no one is giving you the full picture. So you're going to have to get it yourself, but you're going to have to know how to get it. Right, so switching back real quick, let's go from here. Let's do a simple Google search. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit search, plant-based diet study. So this is me trying to validate that a plant-based diet is good. And I'm not going to go too deep. I'm just gonna go right there. There is a second one, the top 10 plant-based research and news stories. Why does it say stories instead of actual research okay let's go into it let's figure it out okay um there's one now i, I made this argument yesterday major nutrition group states that well-planned vegan diets with select supplements are safe and healthy for all ages first of all i argued that the supplement industry was funding this marketing behind veganism and vegetarianism and they really are i will tell you that if anyone visits india as a habit, Hinduism does not support eating meat. So because it doesn't support eating meat, and there's different diets, man, there's so many different Hindu diets, but the ones that are strictly vegetarian and vegan have lived for hundreds of years without touching meat, right? And they've lived for hundreds of years without having supplements. So I'm not saying it's a fact that you have to have supplements. I'm just saying the people promoting the information are the supplement organizations trying to get you to buy their products and you need to realize that that information is bias right so let's not go any further let's go let's look the uh, uh, position a statement of vegetarian diets a uh, major institution came out with a message like german group did okay so we've got 
it goes on and on and on in, in a cohort study. Now, I clicked through on one of these and I found that this was behind one piece of information. One piece of information was that the, uh, um, I, I scrolled down because I, I saw this beautiful table down here, right? A healthy diet is not just protein or plant versus animals. Okay, it sounds like kind of what I say, you know, it's balanced, whatever. So am I just gonna take that because it agrees with me? Well, most of you would, but I'm not gonna take that because it agrees with me. I'm gonna look a little bit deeper. And when I look a little bit deeper, I find what's behind this. So let's look at this. This is saying that energy and energy from total sugars and salts. So what are we basing this on? The article is saying it's making a headline claim. A healthy diet is not just protein or plant versus animals based on fats and sugars that are in people's diets. And it's citing research that was done about those fat and sugars. Now, when you click the link, it takes you to this body of research this published research paper, which is high compliance with dietary recommendations and a cohort of meat eaters, fish eaters, vegetarians, and vegans result from the European perspective investigation into cancer and nutrition Oxford study. Now, A, you just found out that something that was made as a blanket statement only applies to Europeans. So first of all, it was only done in Europe. And you have to realize that there are a plethora of conditions that can create the outcomes from them that is the their food system country by country so it not is not europe right it could be in italy it could be in france it could be in scotland it can be in the uk it can be in germany it can be in oslo and switzerland it, it could be anywhere right and each one of those countries have separate laws and separate things that govern their food system so that's one we're a little off because we are only talking about a single populace and we're not specifying but here we go this is right there Let's, let's take a look at it, right? It says that a perspective investigation. Now, why is the term European used? Because Europeans carried it out the, the, the investigation and it was done in Europe, right? Comprising of 18,244 mediators. Okay, this is how the reports are done, by the way. They use a subsampling of people. It doesn't necessarily tell you about their race. It doesn't tell you about their backgrounds. It doesn't tell you about the other conditions of their life. It doesn't tell you about other things. So this is what we call a bias research. 4,531 fish eaters, a much smaller subset. 6,673 vegetarians, and here's the worst part, 803 vegans. Now this supports my point of a balanced diet. But in this subset, they only use eight. 103 vegans. How do I know that they didn't just go to a specific neighborhood where the vegans are there, but they're like 20 corner stores. So there's all kinds of Hershey bars and Goo Goo Berries and everything on the side there for them to eat. And that's why they're so dang going unhealthy. You got to look, look deeper, right? So this is number one, understand the research that you're quoting and understand because all of it is empirical research. All of it is a perspective base that's based on a sampling group. And by the way, that is an improper way to connect any food or diet to a disease. To connect a food or diet disease, I have to see this person inject this food in their body for an extensive period of time. This is why they use rats and other things like that, because they'll inject them with a specific thing and nothing else. Then they'll dissect that animal. And when they dissect that animal, they'll then look at its tissue to understand that a specific cancer was caused by that injection of that thing. Then you would have to compare it against other things in order to rule them out. The problem with human beings is they always take in so many things, their lives are dynamic. And these individuals between the ages of 30 to 90 years old. So there are 30 years of eating patterns before these people made an assumption that they were vegan. So some of the vegans could have been meat eaters for 20 years. Some of the meat eaters could have been vegans for 30 years and you would have no idea out of this study. So this is what we call deeply biased information, right? And then we go and we look for the second source of bias. Second source of bias here is grant support. Grant support will tell us here, let's go down, grant support. That is the money 
That's where the money comes from. And there's two places, Cancer Research of the UK and there's the Medical Research Council of the UK. Now, looking into the Cancer Research of the UK, we find this. And I'm gonna tell you, it's not easy to find the page that I just found. I had to go to support us, become a partner, and then I had to find this, our corporate partners uh, portion. And that wasn't easy to do. My video has stopped, but I'm going to talk for a second. I'm just kind of resetting my camera, but the, the, the screen over here hasn't stopped. So we'll keep going real quick, but I'm wrapping it up. So don't think this is going to be too long. Listen to this in your car on your way in, right? Great information. So our corporate sponsors for the cancer research in the UK include Navia Sun, Scottish Power, Tesco. Now, who's dropped the money? Scottish Power's dropped 15 million. Now, hold on one second. I remember a report a long time ago that power lines, like big power lines, when people sat by them, it could cause various forms of cancer. Why would Scottish Power be controlling the data about the research into cancer? Why would Tesco, which is a food company, that deals in processed foods and GMOs be funding cancer research. You think that they want to outshow themselves? Do you think that they're going to drop their business? You think they're going to hurt themselves? Oh, I, I can guarantee you that they are not going to hurt themselves. They are not going to mess up what it is that they do that. I'm just know for a fact, they're not going to do it. Okay. These people are going to support their own investments time and time again. And those investments also include doing things and controlling data that would reinforce the way they do business. So that being said, I'd like for you to look deeper into the research. My morning rant for this morning is that you don't know what you're talking about if you haven't looked into the sources of your data and if you haven't looked into the motivations behind that data. And that is Farouk Hunter's morning rant. I am sorry that the video cut out a minute ago, but I shall let those who are listening go at this point and say thank you and see you next morning.